What's the best way to recover highlights when we're color grading? There are a staggering number of answers to this question floating around out there, and yet none of them are very good. Why? Because the answer can only ever be as good as the question. And in this case, the question is kind of lousy. Now, there are a number of reasons why I say this, but here's the main one. There's actually no such thing as highlight recovery. No, really, there's no such thing as highlight recovery. Saying that you want to recover a detail that was clipped in camera is the same thing as saying you want to recover what was going on over here off camera while the camera was rolling. The camera didn't see it, so it doesn't exist. But the news may not be as bad as we think because a lot of the time when we say highlight recovery, what we really mean is compensating for damage that we ourselves have done to the highlights in the course of grading our image. What I wanna show you today is how you can avoid doing that damage in the first place. Because while highlight recovery may be impossible, highlight preservation and sculpture are critical parts of a successful color grade. So let's take a look at some images here inside of Resolve. And here on my very first image, I'm gonna do some grading in the style that I was taught when I very first began color grading many years ago. All I'm gonna do is go into my lift and my gamma and my gain, my primaries, and start to stretch out my contrast, get kind of a healthy level of contrast on the image. And then I'm also gonna add some saturation, okay? So we'll do that here. If I turn this node off and then back on, you can see I've certainly got a more normalized image. It's a more healthy starting point. It looks somewhat reasonable on my display in terms of its contrast and its color, right? However, I can also observe that outside areas like the ground here and the back wall over here have gotten very, very hot in terms of the highlights, right? There's not much detail there. And I might indeed want to bring some detail back into those areas. And a common workflow from here, again, the way that I was sort of taught when I began grading, is to start doing new serial nodes after node number one and do power windows or qualifiers or any other number of tools to start to target these areas and essentially compensate for what I did here in node number one that's not working very well in these particular portions of the image, right? I wanna show you a fundamentally different way of operating, a different way of grading. I'm gonna reset everything here in my node graph and I'm gonna grab this save still I have up here in my gallery, drop it onto node number one. What I have here is a color space transform. And this color space transform is taking me from my camera color space to my display color space. And essentially what I've done here with this node is set up a very simple form of color management. Now, if you're brand new to color management, don't know anything about it, wanna learn more, I talk about color management a lot here on the channel. A great place to start would be my DaVinci Wide Gamut Workflow Series, where I'm gonna show you the exact settings that you can use to color manage all of your projects. For today, we're just gonna treat this 2709 node as a little piece of magic, a little one-stop bit of color management that we can use to get better results out of our images. And what I'm gonna do from here is actually do all of my grading off to the left of this transform. So instead of, as I had a moment ago, a primary adjustment that I then apply fixes to after the fact in subsequent serial nodes, I now have a technical color space transform that's doing that same job of normalizing my image for the display. However, it's coming dead last and I'm instead shaping what I feed into this transformation. So as we said a moment ago, instead of breaking something or losing detail and then trying to compensate for that, I'm gonna make sure that I'm only sending the right thing into this transform so that I'm getting the proper results as an end product on my display, okay? So here's a couple of principles that we can use to do that. The first thing that we can do if we wanted to bring in these highlights that even now are still feeling kind of spicy would be to go to our offset and we could bring our overall exposure down. And you can see that if I get far enough, all those details are there. They never left. They were actually here in the negative all along. And we're simply controlling that journey from camera negative out to display state, right? So that's great. This offset adjustment is certainly proving that those highlights are there and available to me. However, in the case of this image, certainly the uh, length that I've gone to here in the offset is much too far because I've lost all exposure and all healthy level on my subject who happens to be inside of this house and have far less light on them, right? So let's reset this and say instead that we're gonna go as far as we can with our offset. We're gonna to try to get back some of those highlights, 
but we're also going to recognize that that's no good if we end up losing our subject exposure in the process, right? So maybe that nets me out somewhere more around here. If I turn this off and then on, I feel better about that. And what I now want to do is something that I'm going to encourage you to think about going forward as we talk about this conversation of sort of upgrading our highlight recovery concept. I want you to start thinking more dimensionally. I want you to start thinking in more nuance about really shaping the overall image. So we're not just in this binary mode of recovering or losing our highlights, but we're more in a mode of sculpting all of our highlights, all of our tonality for the entire image in such a way that we get the best possible reproduction on our display. So the way that flows from here is after we've done this exposure adjustment, which I'm going to go ahead and label exposure, I'm going to now do a contrast adjustment so that I can work both sides of the coin. I'm going to go to my lift and my gain here, start to bring my lift up and my gain down so that I'm pulling those highlights a bit more in, but I'm not losing too much stop on my subject. Okay. So here's what that looks like. My kind of first crack at it. You can see I'm getting some of those highlights back. I'm also preserving exposure on my subject. So we can label this node contrast. And thus far, all I'm doing is making good fundamental choices on my way to this final output transform. So again, instead of doing the thing and then having to undo parts of the thing, I'm simply changing what I feed into that thing in the first place so that I'm getting the best possible result. And the last thing that I want to talk about, we're going to go to a new shot for. Let's look at our clips here. I want to go over here to shot number three and let's go ahead and copy what we did in shot number one as a sort of template that we can follow. And what I'm going to do here is reset these nodes. So I'm still going to have a contrast node. I'm still going to have a exposure node, but I'm going to redo these adjustments uh, in a way that best supports this image rather than the image I was just on. So let's go back to our offset and just find the sweet spot for our exposure. Go over here to our contrast, kind of rein that in a little bit. I'm actually going to reset that and turn my offset mode on my panel off here. So we'll bring up our shadows, bring up our highlights and do the best we can to sort of sculpt our image per our creative intent, just like we did here on shot number one. And let's say that this is the ideal representation of using these tools to get that ideal reproduction. However, this image poses a new problem. I'm looking at the highlights out here and even after having the best fit in terms of exposure, and sort of basic contrast levels, I still feel like I would like to bring these values in a little bit more. They still feel a little bit spicy to me. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to compress our highlights into a smaller range and make them a little bit less electric in the process. So let's do a new serial node. I'm going to go over here to my custom curves. And what I want to do now is drag my eyedropper in this highlight region and look at the control points that I'm given. And I'm going to start to work the very upper control point here of my curves. Now you'll notice I have my editable splines turned on right here in this three dot menu, which help to shape things when you're drawing curve adjustments like this one. And so far, I'm probably not having much effect on my image because I'm really only manipulating this very upper portion. So what I'm going to start to do is to walk this control point downward. I'm pinning it to this unity line by holding down my option key. And I'm just going to start to bring it downward and now enable and disable and start to see how my highlights are becoming just a bit less sort of like pingy and a little bit more creamy in character, right? So again, this stands in stark contrast to the idea of highlight recovery. Is it in or is it out? And it's more a question of where are those highlights living and how compressed or how linear do they feel on our final display rendering? So this is uh, another uh, trick that I like to use all the time when exposure doesn't do it and when contrast doesn't do it, because something else that we want to keep in mind here is that we want to take the simplest possible approach in terms of shaping what we feed into this end display transform. The simplest approach is always the best approach. I talk about this in my book, The Colorist 10 Commandments, Simplicity Beats Complexity. So if you can achieve your goals with a simple exposure adjustment, that's better than achieving them with a contrast adjustment. If you try your exposure, you try your contrast, and you still have more that you wish to do, that's when you want to go to a solution like this one where you're manipulating the curve of your image in a bit more of a complex way. But obviously we're getting a result out of this that we would not have been able to using our exposure or our contrast nodes. So 
I hope this gives you some ideas to think about in terms of leveling up your concept of highlight recovery and trading it in for a more nuanced idea about how you can really shape your image, your highlights and the rest of your tonalities from their camera acquisition state all the way out to their display state and think about not highlight recovery, but highlight preservation, making sure that nothing you do is actually destroying important highlight information and that you are sculpting your highlights in a manner that agrees with your creative intent.